Hey there, y'all. This is day three Inca Trail. I'll call this Inca Trail Musings. What have I learned? What have I thought about while going on the Inca Trail? You know, it's, uh, as I mentioned with the prior information, I'm early 50s. Um, this adventure's taught me an awful lot. Um, it's kind of pushed me to look at life slightly differently. Um, I'm not a person that's afraid of failure. In fact, I often sort of relish failure. I try not to let the thought of failure stop me from doing something if I really believe it's important. Um, at no point on this adventure, and frankly, it's been physically brutal. Mentally, it hasn't been that tough. And at no point did I say to myself, I want to quit. And I'm a little bit surprised by that, frankly. Um, I'm generally not a quitter. I'm a person that likes to look at the lay of the land and if information changes, situation changes, then certainly reevaluating my position. I don't want to go down with a sinking ship if the information has changed and what I, my beliefs I held previously shouldn't be held anymore, then I'm okay with a change. Uh, but I got nervous going into this one and I guess nervous and I'd call it anxiety. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of time to train I've been doing a little bit every day, but most people would look at my daily training regimen over the last year and probably laugh. But I did something every day. And I was a little bit happy that I was able to do what I was able to do over the past couple days, but it was still brutal. And I'm walking along the trail now. This is kind of the last part of day three we are going to a campsite that'll be a fairly short distance from Machu Picchu um, it's in the afternoon it's about three o'clock this is the rainforest area so we've had on and off rain there's heavy heavy brush to sort of protect us from the sun of course it's not out because it's been fairly cloudy um, and it's a little bit of an easier go on this last couple hours. Uh, the trails are still different. If you're from America and you're used to hiking, <laughs> Inca Trail is a whole different deal. You had all these rocks, fairly good size. Nothing's really flat. Your ankles are probably, uh, if they could, they'd cry and slap you for what you are doing to them so it's been physically brutal and frankly it's been one of the most brutal or well, probably the most brutal physical experience in my life um, but it's not something I complain about it uh, has given me a chance to sort of hike by myself a fair amount I kind of struggle with that I love being in a group. I'm an extrovert. I get my energy from people. I don't know if many of you are, are that way. Um, I get terrified. I get anxious being alone. Um, something I struggle with other than in the morning. I kind of have a half an hour to an hour in the morning. I kind of consider my own sort of sacred time that... Uh, I really try to uh, protect and uh, but other than that I really like to be around people I'm stopping here now there's this beautiful picture area um, there's several mountains that are just kind of poking through I had my phone turned off I have a uh, battery that is uh, 
got a bunch of battery options that are not really working as great as I'd like to. One of the little technical tips, if you're, uh, if you're here and it's cold, that's going to wreck shop on your cell phone battery. It's going to wreck shop on your portable batteries. We brought four kind of small portable chargers. I brought a uh, kind of a mid-size solar panel that would hook on the back of my backpack. Pretty lightweight. Hasn't been too effective. Quite frankly, if I'm honest, I think I forgot to unplug, or I forgot to plug it in the first day. Uh, second day, negligible charge at best. This is the third day, haven't checked it yet, although I did check it was plugged in twice. But we've had pretty heavy cloud coverage. So I'm not sure what you don't want to do. You don't want to end up with uh, no charge on your phone to take pictures of Machu Picchu. So, but at nighttime, if it's cold, sleeping with your chargers in your sleeping bag, kind of wrap them up in something, put them in there, your cell phone, same sort of thing. That will help with, with matters. That's been my experience. Um, Headlamps are pretty essential too. You know, a lot of things happen later in the evening, early in the morning, including our trek, I believe tomorrow will start off. I think they get us up at 3 a.m. So headlights are uh, awesome. Steffi stuff has been resistant to headlamps just because I think she thinks they're dorky. Um, but it really frees up your hands. And a lot of times it's a real safety feature. So definitely get a good one of those. Um, but back to failure. You know, we talk a lot on Between Two Teeth about discovery and inspiration. And I've seen a lot of people on this track. Now, most people are probably in their 20s. A lot of people early 30s. Some people in their 40s. Handful. Well, I shouldn't say handful. I'm not carbon dating people or aging people are asking them. Um, but there's certainly people in their 50s and 60s. We have good friends who did this kind of early 60s. And uh, I think there's people in their 70s doing this. And quite frankly, there's probably people in their 80s. But it is, it's rough. You don't go from no activity to doing this. And uh, but you learn a lot about yourself. I learn a lot about myself. I, I don't know how you are, but I really need to push myself out of my comfort zone. I want to do something with the country of Bhutan. It's a really small country, kind of wedged between China, India, Nepal. Um, I learned about it in my Master's of Business Administration, my MBA program, I learned about it. Did a paper in my international economics class and they've been following the gross domestic happiness we follow gross domestic product gdp well they follow gross national happiness and they've been doing it for a long time people actually get a day off of work paid and it's a full day survey um, but they've been following it and uh they take happiness very seriously. They actually have a commission on happiness. They're trying to balance economic growth with the happiness of the people. They're trying to balance it with the ecology of the environment. You know, they, they charge tourists a certain amount per day. You have to have a guide. There's a bunch of different factors that come into play. So it's really... Uh, really pretty interesting and I would love to do a program they have challenges with access to health care medicine and dentistry in part because they have um, such far-ranging communities that are in the mountains and I would love to do a program where doctors from America go over there and help with access to care but also get a chance to interact with their commission on happiness and kind of learn some of what they're uh, learning there. I think that would be a pretty unique experience. 
Um, so that would mean for me probably doing some hiking and uh, there's some quite high altitudes with that and so this is in part preparation to see how I do for that adventure so this has been tough this has been a kick in the pants for me to say I need to get out there I need to go ahead and uh, work out a little bit more every day I need to push myself exercise wise um, what I'm doing right now is not cutting it I'm taking a picture in front of this gorgeous views it is absolutely incredible it's hard to describe the mountain ranges with the foliage I've spent a lot of time in California a lot of time in Colorado uh, the Italian Alps with the motorcycle adventure um, but in, and in Costa Rica and Guatemala and Nicaragua but this is just kind of a different experience <sighs> quite frankly a lot more a lot different when you've had to hike between the mountains and up the mountains to get to the uh, different views and mountain ranges pretty intense experience but failure don't let failure unreasonable failure stop you from doing what you really want to do and you know what if you sign up for something and you try and you can't accomplish it at least you tried I'd rather be someone that tried and failed than never tried at all you know think of the advice you'd give to your younger self if I was talking to young Bobby McNeil in ninth grade or grade nine I'm from Canada originally they call it grade nine um, I'd say don't let fear hold you back you know amazing things can happen when you say why not Amazing things can happen when you're open to new experiences. If you had told me, I'd have a YouTube channel and a podcast called Between Two Teeth, and I would be uh, co-hosting the American Dental Association annual session in 2023, I'd say, what? <laughs> um, but we put it out there and we said, we'd love to host it. And uh, we got asked to host. And we put a message out there. We have so few subscribers. So if you're one of our subscribers, thank you so much. And if you're not, oh my gosh, we'd love you to subscribe. But you got to be okay with helping one person. And that one person may be yourself. Once again, I look at this as a, a journal for me. As I'm walking the Inca Trail, I was advised just to shut up and not record anything audio or video and just absorb everything. Well, you know what? If that works for you, knock yourself out. For me, being able to kind of do what I'm doing right now, this is therapeutic. This is intellectually stimulating for me. This helps me sort of process the whole experience I'm sure when I'm home and I've showered and actually got into clean clothes yeah, that'll give me a chance to reflect and maybe think a little bit differently but I think I'm gonna love having these conversations to listen back upon you know there's a fair amount of evidence that you gain happiness and enjoyment and pleasure from planning vacations from going on vacations and from remembering vacations and the remembrance can be audio video pictures all that kind of stuff um, but do what works for you don't let me don't let other people tell you what works for you you know part of our deal is connect discover inspire we're just putting something out there man 
and it may be something that you pick up on. I've had some pretty nasty pushback from people on what we're doing. Most of the time they've done it anonymously. Um, so you probably know what I think of that. Um, but do what's right for you and try things out. And when someone says why, say why not? And if you do something and it was a disaster, you've learned something. For me, if I took this trip and I couldn't complete it, and I'm not there yet, so, you know, shouldn't talk. Um, but then that gives me information. And I know that if I'm trying to go to the country of Bhutan and go to some of their sacred sites, I know this altitude, I know that altitude. I know what I did training-wise, and I know I've got to crank it up. Um, so failure gives you great information. I say I love failure. I actually love, I relish in people oftentimes saying no, especially if it's something I'm passionate about. Because then I figure out just if the juice is worth the squeeze, I try coming at it from a different angle. That may be working around somebody. That may be working through somebody. Uh, but just doing something a little different. So I'm going to push you because that's what I do. Think about what you want to do. Think about is failure kind of a serious concern of yours? Is there some little baby step, medium step, or big step that you'd love to take and you need the courage to do it? I'd love you to do it. And if you do it, we're also about connection. And I think we fail pretty strongly on that because um, it's hard to connect sometimes. But we'd love to hear your comments through any of our platforms, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, or podcast. Um, we're at B2Teeth, and between two teeth, you can find us somewhere. Website, actually, b2teeth.com. Um, but get out there and do something. We'd love to hear it. Thanks for listening, y'all. If you like what we're talking about, please hit the subscribe.